Are you still using one of these type of can openers, the butterfly can openers? Folks, things have changed in the world out there and we now have new can openers, fancy side cut can openers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna walk you through why you might want to upgrade. You might want to upgrade. This is 10 bucks um, that may just change your life. Um, we're going to be talking about how to open up a can. And uh, I cut the open up these uh, canned green beans that I had put back in stock for, for quite a while. And uh, just had these for dinner to make some uh, beef stew. I always mix my canned beef stew with some green beans because it stretches it some makes it a little more healthy and just makes it delicious. But um, we're gonna be walking through why a side can opener is better than the top punch can opener. Now, maybe you're out there and you're like, I use a P38 all the time and you know, well, good for you. I'm gonna still suggest this being better. Side cut is uh, optimal because like the butterfly and any other top cut can opener, it's going to make a difference so how do can openers usually work? You know how a can opener usually works. You basically cut the inside lip of that can open, right? And then there's a jagged edge and a jagged lid. Uh, the P38 leaves a jagged lid. Any of the little hand ones, uh, even the crank ones, even the, uh, the electric ones out there are gonna leave a jagged edge. But here I am on this side cut No burr. That's why these are often marketed as safety can openers. They're, this one was 10 bucks on Amazon. I bought this a while ago and it's 10 bucks right now, $10 and 20 some cents. But it does some really neat things. Here's the lid. Again, the lid has a little bit sharper of an edge, but it's still not, you can't, you're not gonna cut yourself on that. I guess, I guess if you really tried, you might be able to, but it re it's a lot duller, way, way duller. And it's got this little, because what it does is it actually cuts the side of the can, so the whole lid comes off, which means you can take the lid and you can set it right back on top there. You can even push it down to see, and oh, look at that, it snaps in. Do you see how that might be a little bit useful? How taking the lid off of your can and then creating a uh, resealable container might be a little more useful than those sharp, jaggedy edges that you get off your regular can opener. Now, this isn't seating just right because this, this one was actually a little dented. But uh, if it wasn't dented, it, it seats really nicely. But even with that dent, I can still get it down into the, uh, the seated position. And this would be a, you can open up the can, eat some, put the lid back on, shove it down on there, and then it, it's on there. You don't need to use cellophane on it. You don't need to use anything. You see how that might be a little bit of an ad advantage? And if you have a lot of canned goods and you start cutting lids off, you're creating storage containers. Is the light bulb like flashing in your mind right now? You're creating storage containers. You take one of those giant um, uh, number 10 cans and you cut the lid off, you wash out the insides and now you have a resealable number 10 can that you can use to store whatever pops in your brain. Freedom seeds in there, you can put beans, uh, rice, you can cook things in there. Interesting, isn't it? It's safe. In an SHTF situation, a grid down situation, the last thing you need to do is cut your fingers on a can, right? You do not need to cut your fingers on a can and then you get an infection in there. That's just the last thing you need. How much harder is it to use one of these than it is to use one of these butterflies? Honestly, Okay, you first you look at it and you're like, how does that work? But if you just put the wheel on the top and start turning, it catches and just 
goes through. It's it's as easy. The only problem is that you don't see how much progress you're making. Like you're cutting, and sometimes you like go all the way around the can, and you're like, am I done? Whereas, you know, the butterfly, the, the top of the lid drops down into your food. So if I have a can that's been sitting in long-term storage, you can see here that the outside started to rust here. Um, so I am going to be, I have been noticing that on some of my cans is that uh, they are getting some rust, uh, which is why I'm actually relocating a bunch of my canned goods uh, currently. Uh, reorganization is the, the name of the game here at the Poplar Homestead. Um, so if you have dust and dirtiness and yuckiness on there and then you cut the lid off and suddenly it drops down into your food, is that really sanitary? Do you really want to get sick because you're using the wrong can opener? When we talk about getting redundancy, getting more can openers, I think that if you start using this can opener, you're going to see a lot of the advantages relatively quickly. And in a doomsday situation, you're going to like the resealable cans. But let's talk about something else that's kind of along those lines. Let's talk about um, more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> okay, so I think that this is optimal. Uh, I think it's optimal from a price perspective and just an ease of use perspective and a lot of utility. But I probably didn't convince a bunch of you and you're kind of like, this is what I got. It works fine. I'm just going to keep on using it. And we, we have a lot of these conversations in the preparedness community where someone gets on and says, this is the proper way of doing this. You must do it this way. And a lot of us are like, nah, there's other ways of doing that. You know, I can do it like a little bit differently. Some people are like, you must stick all of your food in mylar bags, oxygen absorbers in there, like minimum XCC, and, and you got to seal it up in this proper way. Make sure you roll it just right. And if you don't do it right, you're wrong. And you'll probably die in the apocalypse. <laughs> Um, we've all we've all seen these kind of conversations. We've seen these type of videos out there, and you know what? If you don't take my recommendation on this type of can opener, you, you're probably going to survive. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, your your likelihood of surviving is probably not going to be significantly decreased. Probably. Um, will this make your life easier? Yeah, probably. But we see a lot of those things in the preparedness community. We see a lot of like whiz bang stuff. And it's just like some people who just have entirely way too much time on their hands who do something so thoroughly, or at least they appear to do something so thoroughly that uh, you kind of look at that and you go, well, if I were to, to do that with all of, all of my preps and, or all of my garden or all of this or that, I don't know if I'd have any time left. And so we need to kind of, we need to balance things out, right? Um, th there's the optimal way of doing things, and then there's like the compromise, right? And then on the far side is the, the um, I don't care, I'm just waiting here to die for the apocalypse, you know? We don't want to be those people. But we may have different strategies to approach things. You may not have any... Uh, you know, industrial canned goods in your in your storeroom. You may be like, I don't do that. I can all of my own stuff in glass jars. Or maybe you just don't even use canning jars, period, and you just are going with just dry materials and just five-gallon buckets for long-term food storage. And that's just how you roll. You have a big garden and you just use five-gallon buckets for, for rice, beans, and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I mean... There's more than one way to skin a cat. And I think we all need to have a bit of grace out there. And uh, if you don't use this type of can opener, even though it's, it's right, even though it's the best way forward, I forgive you. <laughs> I say that in sarcasm, right? You know, you don't need my forgiveness. Um, you're, you're watching some guy on YouTube who has an opinion about a can opener. And we've all seen videos of people who have an opinion about all sorts of things. I bet you have an opinion too. And 
it's going to be different than me. Some of you are like clinging to your P58, uh, P, P38 right now. Just like, mm, nope, nope, you will not take this from me over my dead body. You, make, you can pry it from my cold, dead hands. Um, I wasn't going to change your views coming into this video. You probably came into the video so you can type a bunch of comments <laughs> to try to convince other people. And so we're all going to make through it somehow. We're all going to uh, do our best to, to get through there. Um, so don't take people's opinions too, too seriously. Listen to them. See what you can learn from them. And hey, if you want to try out a safety can opener, check it out on Amazon. The, the link's down in the description down below. Um, but, uh, you know, they got all sorts of kinds out there. So whatever floats your boat, keep doing it. Keep moving forward. Don't get discouraged and don't get too caught up in the politics of uh, the preparedness channels and websites and all that kind of thing. There's more than one way to skin a cat, folks. I know it. You know it. And uh, we'll all get through this together. God bless you all. If you like this video, you might want to check out this video right here. Otherwise, I will see you later. Steve Poplar out.